let's move straight now to look at the current crisis and see what the issues are that we feel can be helped using a, a program like pegs to paper um, at the beginning of lockdown what the most important issue was um, was parents at, uh, at home suddenly being landed with this job of supporting their children of teaching their children in the home setting most of whom had never had any experience of this at all and this was the focus of um, of the issues at the beginning of the pandemic so uh, pegs to paper being a sensory motor program um, had two things first of all it offered content because in those early days before schools were able to send content home parents didn't really quite know what to do especially with younger children children in nursery and in reception so the pegs to paper program not only does it give the materials but it gives very clear instructions on how to use them so this was a very obvious way in which we could support parents and teachers as the pandemic continued many parents were reporting that um, in getting their children to engage with schoolwork and in sustaining their interest were becoming issues so again we felt that pegs had a role to play in this particular area well as the lockdown <laughs> continued and it became obvious that children were going to miss four months possibly six months and if in scotland even longer than that um, children were at risk of falling seriously behind um, in not all areas of their schoolwork but we know that handwriting is one particular area where this can happen so the next issue became when children go back to school how can we support the teachers in closing the gap during those areas with no education again um, pegs to paper came out very well in how that might happen because it looks to support all the underlying competencies which are needed before children um, can be competent and master literacy and numeracy then with feedback from uh, schools later on we were asked can we use this program as an assessment tool can we sort out who are the children who naturally close a gap quite quickly from those who are rather struggling and that the the, way, the missed years the missed months rather um, are really taking a toll and of course this can't be used as a formal assessment tool, but we are working at the moment to see how it can help identify the children who need longer to close this gap. And the fourth area um, that's become key in this crisis, how do we support those who've fallen behind? Because there are obviously a large number of children who need a lot of time and input to make up the lost education. So this is how we started thinking about how we could adapt how we present pegs to paper. First for parents at home and also for schools for this particular purpose. And later on in the presentation, Simon will be talking to you about how they've made the adaptations to pegs in order to meet the needs of the current crisis. But before he does that, we had agreed that because many of you won't be familiar with pegs to paper whilst he will demonstrate the products and show you how it's used you perhaps need to know how it came to be developed and what was the rationale behind this approach well it's based quite clearly on two separate branches of cognitive psychology the first one is what was known as embodied cognition now, what do I mean by that? Embodied cognition is a recognition that we learn most securely when we physically engage with our environment, when we have actual physical contact with the materials and bodily contact with our environment. Our learning is more natural, it's easier, it's more embedded, it's more solid. And this is obvious in young children, in babies and infants, but it's also true of older children and to a certain extent in adults, where we engage with something physically, we retain the knowledge. 
And because the program was originally designed to be used for children with motor coordination difficulties, um, this was a very clear aim that by using these grip pegs on the giant pegboard and by using uh, the pattern cards to copy the patterns, um, they were physically engaged. But here we added above many of the motor programs which were developing in the 90s and the early part of the century, we added the theories of the Russian psychologist Vygotsky on the role of language in learning. And these are two quite clear and separate um, areas. The first one he called the zone of proximal development, ZPD. And the thinking behind this was that if you challenge a child with a task, if the task is too difficult and the goal too far away, then the child doesn't engage. Their attention isn't held and they get no intrinsic reward from the task. They get uh, no sense of success. They just get failure. So his theories suggested that if you controlled the zone of learning, you brought the parameters closer to the child so that the child could succeed in each of the smaller tasks. They would achieve the goal because they were building success on success and not experiencing failure. And to give you an example of this in the handwriting context, if you ask a five-year-old to copy or to learn their, to write the letter forms, for many that's too difficult. But if using something like the pegs and the pegboard, you teach children to recognize and to actually physically make the lines that the letter forms are made up of, the straight lines, vertical and horizontal, the diagonal lines to left and right, the curved lines. Once you understand those and can reproduce them, then building them into letter forms and numerals is a very straightforward task. So that is a very good example of how manipulating the ZPD can affect um, learning. It also, of course, meets one of the um, criteria we were looking at earlier, which it helps engage the child and holds the attention. So again, that is a very important part in this context. The second branch of Vygotskin theory is scaffolding, and I know that many of you will be familiar with this concept. Scaffolding is in parallel to a physical scaffold on a building. It gives you support. But Vygotsky's theories suggest that if you can internalize the scaffold, then you retain that support even when the person who's teaching you is not present. So how do you create an internal scaffold so that you retain the learning from the learning context. And the key to this is in language. So, um, within pegs to paper, first of all, we have to uh, expose children to the language they're going to be used. So they have to learn to listen to the instructions and to translate the instructions into physical form by using the pegs. Once they've made their um, engaged in their tasks, they've made their patterns on the pegboard, then you ask them to repeat what they were doing. So you fed the language in, that's the chance where you draw the language out and you make them fluent in using the language to direct their physical activity. Now what is interesting about this theory is that it has had the most immense impact on retention in terms of retaining the contact, content of what is learnt. And it's not a surprise that this is a very important aspect of the pegs to paper program. So how do we translate this into the exercises for parents and teachers? And I'd like to show you, we'll move to the next frame, please. We'll just see one example of how we translate this through the, the pattern cards. What I'm showing you on the screen here are the exercises for handwriting for children of five to five plus. And the absolute pillars of pegs to paper are four elements. The first is the listening. The second is the doing, the physical engagement. The third is saying, that's repeating in language. 
describing what you did physically, using the language that the teacher fed in or the parent fed in at the beginning. And the last part is drawing, because we know that when you commit something to paper, that again cements learning, it strengthens the memory traces and makes the whole learning experience um, more solid. So it's listening, it's doing, it's saying and drawing. And if you look on the left hand side of this page, <coughs> you'll see how it, halfway through the programme and at intervals, um, the teacher or the parent is invited to revisit and make sure that they are doing the listening, the doing, the saying and drawing for each one of the exercises in the programme. I just put a little bit of um, explanation into the drawing part because remembering that this was part of the embodied cognition, it's the physical act of sitting up to the pegboard so that the postural control is as you would have for writing. By using the pegs, using good by bilateral integration of movement between the two sides of the body, messages are passing from the left, between the left and right hemispheres of the brain. And these are all extremely important when the peg is gripped and pushed with resistance into the board, then the muscles in the fingers and the hand and the wrist and the upper arm are all being engaged and strengthened. And this will help being able to control a writing implement. So these are very direct physical benefits from using the pegs. But there's also an invisible benefit, which wasn't at first recognized, but um, we are becoming more greatly aware. And that is when physically engaging the tasks using the apparatus in this way, parts of the brain are activated. Those parts of the brain that children need in order to recognize and reproduce letter forms. So it's not just to do with physical strength and control. It's also to do with this neural activation, which again sort of primes the brain for learning in the wider context. So listen, do, say and draw are absolutely critical part of pegs to paper. Now, in a moment, I'll be handing over to you um, over to Simon, so that Simon can show you exactly the materials we use and how Nexus have adapted them and made them available to a, a much wider market so that parents can appreciate them as well as schools. Um, but before I do it, I'd like to end my introduction with a short video from my own family. And this is my daughter-in-law working with her four-year-old. Thank you. Homeschooling is not what I ever thought I'd be doing or be any good at. But in the past few weeks, I've been thrown in the deep end like so many other mums and dads. But being able to help teach Sid a real life skill that will go on to become the most natural thing in the world to him, hopefully, is actually really exciting for me. How many pegs have you put in? One, two, three, four, five. You have. And have you put them on the right or the left hand side? Right. Left. That's the left. And what hand did you use? Left hand. And then the right, <laughs> yes. I can see for myself that I'm building his vocab, his handwriting technique, his fine motor skills and his spatial awareness. Just the way he takes the peg in his left hand and then passes it to the right, I now know that it's engaging his whole brain and that ultimately helps him learn. So the way the peg is designed actually helps him develop the right grip for handwriting. And then when he goes on to put the pegs in the board it means he's building strength in the muscles in his hand. And then when I ask Sid to tell me what he's actually done with the pegboard, I'm helping him develop his language as well. 
And I'm actually learning something myself too. It never occurred to me, probably because it comes as second nature to all of us, that most letters need us to draw them in an anti-clockwise direction. And that's why you then get him to draw the circles afterwards so he can get good at forming his letters the right way round. I guess what I love seeing most is that learning seems to be really, really fun for him. And I feel quite proud that I am actually helping him learn something that's so critical to his development and ultimately his future. Please, can I do the pet game again? Please, please. Right now? Yes. Firstly, I'd like to thank Angela for highlighting the relevance and theory behind Pegs to Paper. I very much appreciate the opportunity Melissa and the NHA had given me today. As a company, Nexus have been supplying triangular handwriting pens and pencils to schools for many years. But what we found was we were not improving the handwriting results for children. We adapted different thicknesses, different shapes, but going back to customers, there was no improvement. So I looked up handwriting and I found the National Handwriting Association. And after meeting Angela and sitting down with her, one of the missing links was this giant peg, which um, Angela said was no longer in production and could Nexus help her reproduce this peg? The uh, uh, original peg that Angela gave me um, wasn't quite right. It was a, a solid end, so it, it wouldn't have passed the swallow test or choking hazard test, and it had straight edges. I could see that we could make some further improvements and reproduce the peg. We did explore completely all the other pegs on the market. There are many types of giant pegs available. There are pegs on the market that are triangular, that are square. Those pegs don't help develop the tripod grip. This is the only one that fits perfectly into a child's hand and has the right curvature and the right design. We took the peg, we took the boards, and uh, went to one of our uh, manufacturers and had it reproduced. And we reproduced the 10 by 10 peg board. What we changed was we changed from six colors, which was in the original board, to 10 colors which make perfect sense when you appreciate you've got a 10 by 10 board to have 10 colours. It also helps on, a, on the mathematical side of teaching as well. And we were just then offering a peg board with some pattern cards, very basic pattern cards that Angela had, had produced for uh, doing vertical horizontal diagonal lines and the pattern shapes for doing uh, triangle squares, rectangles. But this we produced for many years and was quite a success. But what we realised were that there was more to teaching um, handwriting than just learning to, to use a peg and the grip and the resistance of pushing the pegs in the board, which of course is one of the main factors behind uh, the peg board and pegs to paper. We could do more with the uh, peg board by having a more structured way of showing the importance of the left and right. We then introduced the linking pots. The linking pots were introduced for a, for a storage facility, because when you have a hundred pegs and a peg board, it's quite difficult to store those pegs back into the, the original container which we had, which was just a plastic box. The linking pots are perfect for positioning either to the left or to the right, because it's so important with handwriting to encourage children to use their more dominant hand. And if you have the, your pegs to your left, and you're asking a child to select with the left hand, put it to the right hand, and actually put the peg into the board with their more dominant hand for right-handed children. Um, this is a, a really helpful guide having the pegs positioned, as you've seen in these pictures. What you don't want to do is to constantly leave the pegs um, in the boards, because if you always store the peg into the EVA foam board, you actually weaken the resistance, because it stretches the, the, the holes. So once you've used the pegs, you should remove them and then you'll find the EVA boards will reform themselves and give you the same resistance every time you introduce the peg back into that board. At the end of the day, this is just an EVA foam, a board and a peg. And yes, if you give the pegs to a child, what they'll do is they'll just stack them. But there's so much more to this product than, than initially just meets the eye. Going back to what Angela had to say earlier, the theory behind this is very much to do with listening to the, the teacher or the parent explaining what's on the card, introducing the vocabulary to the children. 
and then actually getting the child to copy the pattern onto the board using both sides of the brain, going from left to right, then asking the children to explain what they've done, and then coming back to the importance of uh, actually forming the circle around the dots. In all of this, we're introducing colour, number, position, and we're getting the children to form circles. What you do get with a pen on paper is you get the nice resistance. If you've got a, a colouring pencil, you generally have to press harder to, to get that colour down. Um, you've got a really good resistance with a fibre tip pen, and you'll notice most handwriting pens uh, on, on market are fibre tips. We don't encourage bull points, and pencils are, are great, but we're just trying to get the, the ease of forming a circle. Fibre tip, triangular colouring pen is actually the best option. We introduced this giant pegboard, 10 by 10, on its own. We improved the cards. We realised the importance of introducing a 5 by 5 pegboard uh, because what a 10 by 10 board doesn't have is a centre. And if you've got a centre of a board, you can talk about what's above, what's below, what's left, what's right from the centre. By only introducing five colours on a smaller board, it was far more relevant for younger children. What we have learnt is that the young child's brain has more open receptors when you're talking about three to four year olds. So it's really good if you can get a, a three year old that can understand the vocabulary, practicing working with the peg as soon as possible. Um, so by having five colours, five by five, uh, it's very much easier for a three to four year old to use this, this ball. Angela, who's been alongside us right through this journey, had developed the cards, adapted uh, the five by five cards that we were then having as the second step, actually she had changed them to a first step. So we have simpler patterns, vertical, horizontal, diagonal lines, squares and triangles. We then copy those patterns onto paper. Working alongside Angela, we decided that recording the children's work and getting them to actually form their circles reinforces this whole learning experience. So we went from the five by five, then we introduced the same colours but with an extra five colours into the, the uh, 10 by 10 board um, and then we have further extension exercises, more cards, more complex patterns. So you've got this transference from a five by five to 10 by 10. In our years of development, Nexus has produced a play board, which Angela liked very much, but she said if you could make this play board into the same colours, the same 10 by 10 as the giant paint board, we'd actually be leading into additional product and we'd be able to do transference. So all of the patterns they're creating a 10 by 10 board, we could transfer onto the Lincoln Lace board. We also realised that it would be good to be able to strengthen the fingers for handwriting by producing a triangular applicator for that. The relevance of the uh, Lincoln Lace board is that you're able to actually form lines by going into each hole. It's a continuation rather than the pegs always have gaps in between. When you're forming an R, for example, often a child will go down, make a line down and then they, they won't go back up the same line, they'll create a V. If you've got a Lincoln Lace board and you teach children to go back up and down on the same line, they're learning that that is very normal before they are actually forming their letters. So the, the Lincoln Lace board uh, is, a, is a perfect way to finish the program. So you're starting with a five by five, a 10 by 10, and then you have a 10 by 10 Lincoln Lace. All the laces match the colours of the pegs and the colours of the pots and also our pegs to paper colouring pens match in perfectly. So everything works as a system. So I've visited many settings, schools and nurseries. I guarantee this really makes a difference. Every setting that's used pegs to paper has been really impressed with the way that this accelerates learning and the way this closes the gap. As you're about to see in the videos, this is first-hand experience. This is what's happening out there. When Angela came to me and she said, Simon, I've been doing this for 32 years. I know it works. I, I can also verify after going back to many schools, nurseries and primary schools, and seeing firsthand the experiences, uh, this will work and this will help. And at this time in COVID-19, 
when so many children have not had the inputs. It's tough enough for children for six weeks in the summer holidays to come back and be able to write as well as they did before they went. But to have four or five months of school will make a huge difference uh, in helping those children that have fallen behind through this, this pandemic. Now I'd like you to see two videos, one from Kevin Barnett in Hampshire and also from Helen in South Cerny. Thank you. Hello, my name is Kevin Barnett. I'm the Centre Director of Fremantle Church of England Community Academy in Southampton. We were very keen to look at Pex to Paper, very keen to promote it with our staff. And it's very clear that it's been a well thought through process in its creation. It gives my younger children particularly the opportunity to work with their gross motor and to their fine motor and to their writing and pencil control. It's proven to be very successful and that's been seen in the outcomes for our children throughout the school. Down behind us here, we've got the biodome as well. It is a bit different. Our children come in here and this is sometimes they come in and use their pegs to paper type work in a nice environment, a nice calm, cool environmental area where they can get outside to do that. And because the way that the uh, system has been packed, we can move it from place to place really easily and come in here, do their lessons in a totally different environment and enjoy learning in a different way. I'm head teacher at Anne Edwards Primary School and it's a school of 295 pupils with quite a diverse catchment. We've got um, 54 service pupils, um, 24 traveller pupils and 15 looked after children within the catchment. In September of last year we came across the Pegs to Paper programme. Um, I was introduced to it by Simon who is just down the road. He was quite keen to promote it within the school um, and we were looking for something because we had a gap with our writing and wanted to improve handwriting. So it seemed a, a natural progression. Um, we started with the project in September with just a small group of children and then very rapidly moved on, seeing the success of it, moved on to bigger groups, to eventually the whole class using it, and interventions then were rolled out across the school. So we've got small intervention groups in years one and two, three and four, and five and six, and the impact of it has been felt right across the school. Um, as such, we've promoted it um, on hosted events in the school. And the children were very engaged from the start with pegs to paper. At first it was exploratory, it was building towers, it was measuring each other, it was looking at the colours and just generally having a bit of fun with the pegs. Um, it rapidly then moved on to actually more focused teaching following the pegs to paper cards and we saw very quickly that the children were progressing. Um, the engagement particularly of the boys was distinct and we saw then the boys starting to move more to the tables where they were writing implements and enjoying that more and having a greater confidence of being writers and believing they were writers. There's been distinct progress from pegs to paper into the handwriting that's evident in the progress in the children's books which we share um, at parents evening but also in pupil progress meetings. Um, one of the particular cases is an SEND pupil, um, a little boy who is in year one. Um, his progress was over a month and it was really evident in the book and he was so incredibly proud of himself. The progress was distinct in the letter formation but also in the quantity of his writing and the ability to, to write for longer periods of time. The plan for Pegs to Paper in the future for the next year is we want to build on the successes of this year. We've already incorporated in Term 6 some training for the whole of the TAs and they've come to a hosted event as well to, to listen to Dr Angela Webb because clearly understanding the theory behind it is absolutely key. Um, what we're doing next year is we are using it in the whole of early years. We're also using it in our transition between early years and year one. And as such, the early years teacher is becoming a year one teacher to take it up with her. Um, in addition to that, we have got booked training for TAs so that we have dedicated pegs to paper TAs across the school. And they will shadow and support other, other TAs to ensure that it is done correctly because the key element is the vocabulary. Um, but it's also making sure that it's done correctly from the start and understanding how it progresses.